American rapper Russell Tyrone Jones, better known by a myriad of other names, such as Osiris, A Son Unique, Big Baby Jesus, and Old Dirty Bastard, or ODB, was born on November 15, 1968, in Brooklyn, New York. His most famous stage name was derived from the 80s Chinese martial arts film, An Old Kung Fu Master, also called Old Dirty and the Bastard. In his youth, he was largely influenced by the soulful sounds of the 60s and 70s, such as Al Green and the Isley Brothers. Russell, along with his cousins, Robert Diggs and Gary Grice, later known as RZA and Jizza, respectively, formed a hip-hop group called Force of the Imperial Master. Later, they became known as All In Together Now, after their successful underground single of the same name. Around this time, Dirty would marry his wife, Iseline, whom he met at a friend's Sweet Sixteen party. Eventually, the trio added more members to their group, six to be exact, and changed their name again to Wu-Tang Clan. After signing with Loud Records in 1992, the group released their debut album. Dirty was always honest about how much of a troublemaker he was as a child. He would continue the same behavior into his adult life, but evidently face much more dire consequences for his actions. In 1993, he was convicted of second-degree assault for an attempted robbery, and the following year, he was shot on the street in the stomach, following an argument with another unnamed rapper. Two years later, ODB's solo career would begin and take off after signing with Elektra Records. His first solo album, Return to the 36 Chambers, the Dirty Version, spawned the hit singles Shimmy Shimmy Ya and Brooklyn Zoo, which helped propel the album to platinum status. A very personal image was chosen for ODB's debut album cover, his welfare benefits card. One could assume he did that as a symbol and testament to his past, but it was still very much a part of his present. In March 1995, ODB gained notoriety for a very unusual act he did as he was being profiled for a biography done by MTV. He took two of his children, in style no less, courtesy of a limousine, to a New York State welfare office to cash a welfare check and receive food stamps. At the time, his latest album was still in the top 10 on the music charts. The entire incident was filmed by a camera crew and was broadcast nationwide. Although he had recently received a cash advance of tens of thousands of dollars for his first solo album, and was earning a cut of the profits from Wu-Tang Clan's debut album, ODB was still listed as eligible for welfare and food stamps due to the fact that he hadn't yet filed his taxes for the current year. Not surprisingly, his eligibility was revoked after the segment aired. Also that year, he collaborated with pop diva Mariah Carey for the remix version of her hit single, Fantasy. Me and Mariah go back like babies were pacifiers. In 97, he, along with his groupmates, celebrated the release of Wu-Tang Clan's second album, Wu-Tang Forever. Pressed as a double album, it went on to be their most successful to date. Also that year, Dirty was arrested for refusal to pay $35,000 in child support to his wife and assaulting her, as well as driving under the influence. Even though he did a lot of wrong, he did do right at times. Dirty became a certified hero after witnessing a horrible car accident from the window of his Brooklyn recording studio. He and a friend ran to the accident scene and with the assistance of several onlookers, lifted the vehicle and rescued a four-year-old girl from the wreckage. The evening following that car accident, ODB would put in an appearance at the 1998 Grammy Awards to celebrate Wu-Tang's Best Rap Album nomination, and what a memorable appearance it was. During the show, he unexpectedly came up on stage as folk rock singer-songwriter Sean Colvin was about to give her acceptance speech for her Song of the Year win. ODB was visibly irritated and proceeded to let everyone watching know that he had purchased an expensive outfit in anticipation of Wu-Tang Clan winning the award, which they didn't, and that Wu-Tang was for the children. The award went to Puff Daddy instead. In the summer of 98, only days after being shot during a robbery that took place at his residence in Brooklyn, in which two men made off with money and jewelry, 
ODB was arrested for shoplifting a pair of $50 Nike sneakers from a store in Virginia Beach, Virginia. He was issued bench warrants to stand trial after he failed to appear in court numerous times. While in the midst of all his legal woes, ODB was still putting in that work. In September 1999, his second studio album was released titled Nick Please. The album included the single Got Your Money, featuring R&B singer Khalees, which made it into the top 40 on the Hot 100 and garnered worldwide success. In January 1999, two plainclothes officers in Brooklyn fired multiple shots at ODB and his cousin who was with him after accusing him of firing at them when they stopped his car. After being charged with attempted murder, Dirty was eventually cleared by a grand jury. He insisted that the officers had been scared by his cell phone. No weapons or shell casings, besides those of the officers, were found in the vehicle or near the scene. During a press conference the next day, he announced his intention to sue the NYPD. The experience understandably left Dirty on edge, so he began wearing a bulletproof vest whenever he left his home. Less than a month later, he would be jailed in California for just that, since, at the time, there was a state law in place that prohibited convicted felons from wearing body armor. In relation to an arrest for drug possession the year prior, Dirty escaped from his court-mandated drug treatment facility and became a fugitive in October 2000. He did, though, make sure his time on the run was productive. He met with RZA in their recording studio to get some work done. ODB was finally captured and arrested the next month while he was outside a South Philadelphia McDonald's. He was easy to spot since a crowd had formed around him while he was signing autographs. He spent several days in a Philly jail and was later extradited to New York. A Manhattan court sentenced him to two to four years behind bars. After serving two and a half years in prison, ODB was released in the spring of 2003. He came out a very different person from the one that went in, as he explained in his VH1 documentary, Inside Out, ODB on Parole. He revealed that he was scared, didn't eat for months, and had to fight for his life on numerous occasions when physically attacked by other inmates. He also said he felt that the Wu-Tang Clan abandoned him. He ended up living with the only person who consistently supported him and visited him during his incarceration, his mother. He moved into her home while still under house arrest and with a court-ordered probation. One other person that showed ODB some love upon his release and was actually standing outside that day to welcome him back into civilization was co-founder of hip-hop record label Rockefeller Records, Damon Dash. Damon didn't waste any time and signed ODB that very day to a deal. Things moved fast and furious after that. ODB had a press conference where old friend Mariah Carey put in an appearance to show support, to announce his new partnership with Rockefeller, went into the studio to start laying down some new tracks, took to the stage for the first time in three years, and even launched his own clothing line called Dirt McGirt. Sadly, his comeback would be cut short the following year. ODB collapsed and died on November 13th, 2004, two days before his 36th birthday at RZA's recording studio in New York City. The official cause of death was listed as an accidental drug overdose after an autopsy found a lethal mixture of cocaine and prescription drugs. Even after the news of how he died was made public, some still believe that he was right when he mentioned in the past repeatedly that the U.S. government was out to get him. ODB is survived by his wife of 13 years, Iseline, and their three children, which she insists are the only ones that have been proven to be his. The official number of children ODB has fathered has always been a mystery. Even when asked in interviews over the years, he'd consistently dodge the question. Reports have said it could be anywhere from 7 to 13, with at least six women. His posthumous releases include a mixtape, Osiris, in early 2005, as well as his third album, titled Ace on Unique, that was originally shelved by the label and never officially released, but can be found on some digital music distribution services. Years after his father's passing, eldest son, Barson Unique Jones, professionally known as Young Dirty Bastard, would reveal in an interview with Vlad TV that he was with his father on the last day of his life in the studio and watched him get higher than he'd ever been. 
YDB followed in ODB's footsteps, becoming a rapper in his own right. In addition to his own projects, he's also hooked up with Wu-Tang on tour, honoring his late father by performing his verses. At the end of 2013, the controversial documentary, Dirty Platinum Edition, was released. It features unreleased music, interviews, and tons of never-before-seen footage of the rapper prior to his death. According to his family, it hasn't been easy keeping ODB's memory and legacy alive. In November 2014, his family spoke to XXL Magazine about wanting to do something special to commemorate the 10th anniversary of his death, but was unable to after not receiving any support, i.e. money, from anyone. In September 2019, streaming platform Hulu debuted the series Wu-Tang and American Saga. To celebrate the 25th anniversary of ODB's solo debut album, a re-release of the project featuring the original album material, alongside unreleased tracks and instrumentals, was issued in March 2020. Amazon Music also released a 16-minute documentary to commemorate the occasion. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.